This is Brand USA Talks Travel, elevating the conversation about international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. Since we're still getting to know each other, tell me something about yourself that I might be surprised to learn. In my lifetime, I've lived in three different continents. I've lived in Israel, in Australia, and of course, the United States. And I would say that if I wasn't attached to so many things that I own, and of course, this amazing job, I would try to find reasons to live in other countries. Well, with remote work, it's not so far-fetched, right? Sure, but I think this job requires me to be in the U.S. (laughs) (laughs) My guest today is Stacey Melman. Stacey is Brand USA's Senior Vice President of Integrated Marketing. Stacey joined Brand USA in November 2022 after almost 12 years at Visit Florida, where she was Chief Marketing Officer. Welcome to Brand USA Talks Travel, Stacey. Thanks, Mark. I'm so happy to be here. I'm particularly excited to have you here to celebrate and recognize International Women's Day, March 8th. Yeah, yay, women! Yay, women! As you know, Stacey, I've lined up a few of our colleagues from Brand USA to ask you specific questions reflecting on women working in travel, and we'll get to that shortly. But first, let's get a little bit of perspective. How familiar were you with Brand USA when you were CMO at Visit Florida, and what was your perspective about the organization then? I would say that I was reasonably familiar with the organization. Visit Florida was a founding partner with Brand USA when the organization started. We believe in the necessity and the importance of having a national DMO. At Visit Florida, we participated in several of Brand USA partner programs and invested to extend those programs to Florida tourism partners to help raise awareness to potential international visitors. And now that you've seen behind the curtain and you're leading the marketing effort at Brand USA, how's your perspective changing? It's like the iceberg analogy. I thought that I understood what Brand USA was about and the extent of the work that they did. But now what I realize that there's so much more than what I actually knew about. I really just see so much opportunity for U.S. destinations and travel businesses to partner with us. And I think that it's really important to say that the team at Brand USA is committed to finding the best ways that we can support our partner efforts and reach potential international visitors. And that was something that I didn't see on the outside, but it is the through line in the heart of the passion of everybody that works at Brand USA. Visit Florida is a very successful DMO. So what did you learn during your time there that you've brought with you to Brand USA? The first thing I would say that I've learned at Visit Florida bringing with me to Brand USA is really just the importance of partnership. At Visit Florida, I found that we were the most successful when we focused our intention on increasing opportunities for alignment, both within the tourism businesses in the state, as well as with our vendor partners, our agencies, which were extensions of our team. The second would be the importance of inclusive marketing. I led the effort at Visit Florida to expand the representation of diversity within our marketing efforts and particularly in elevating awareness around accessible travel for visitors with disabilities. That's something that I think is really important and I'm excited that Brand USA will be doing more of that in the coming year. And lastly, and this is something that Brand USA has really been leading the way in, so I think that I just maybe complement the existing efforts of Brand USA is innovation. As marketers, innovation is also a way to survive. The industry is constantly changing and travelers' behavior is evolving. So in order to be on the forefront of those shifts as they're happening, we need to continue to innovate and test out new tactics so we aren't in the position of having to play catch up on the back end of it. I think a lot of people don't realize that the model of a state works around its cities. It's just similar to Brand USA in that here we are country and we work with the constituency of all the states and cities, right? So there's a lot in common with what you used to do and what you're doing now. A hundred percent. I think that that has really also helped me in terms of the onboarding process. The familiarity that I had with that structure has really allowed me to hit the ground running. I don't have to learn the structure and how we support the local destinations and the cities and the regions that combine together for efforts. And so that was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as my daughter says. Now a question I got straight off chat GPT, which you and I have talked about quite a bit. Oh, my favorite. It spit out a bunch of great questions, but this was the best one. What is your approach to managing and developing a team of marketing professionals, and how do you foster a culture of creativity and innovation? Good job, (laughs) ChatGPT, putting me on the spot. (laughs) 
and this is not going to surprise you. And basically what I just said, I am a big fan of collaboration. That is a high priority for me in working and building a team and fostering creativity and innovation. I think that collaboration is a table stake of creativity. I also feel that ensuring that everybody has a voice and has an opportunity to share, that's a really important factor of that. I personally like to facilitate and foster healthy, good debate amongst the team. I think the best ideas come from ones that where holes are poked. The best ideas come from those that are debated more rigorously. But it's not only about debate, it's about listening to people's ideas and facilitating a focus on delivering really great work and what that means to everybody and have a shared learning of what that is. I don't think it's an exaggeration for me to say that we're both extroverts. So how do you get an introvert in the situation to express themselves? You call on them. (laughs) (laughs) you make it a little uncomfortable but I think that it's important to say listen we all want to participate and that's the goal and in order to foster collaboration and innovation amongst our team everybody's going to have something to say as part of this conversation so we need to set it up in the beginning in that way and then say if you see them sleeking down in their chair not wanting to be a part of the conversation then I think it's important to ask like hey I'd like to hear what you have to think you invite them to be part of the conversation this is the part I've been looking forward to in the podcast. Let's go now to a few of our colleagues at Brand USA for questions about women driving innovation in the travel industry. First, to Skylar Clark, Director of Partner Marketing. So there's this age old question, can women really have it all? And this is a bit of a two-parter for me, but I'm curious of your thoughts of what does having it all really mean in 2023? And if there are any modern day nuances around that? And then part two, can we do it? That is a great question, Skylar. My answer to that would be, yes, I think we can have it all, but just not at the same time. To me, it's about finding balance over time and selecting what is the most important thing for me in that moment or that day. To me, having it all is like a charcuterie board. There may be people who want all the cheese, but I don't want all the cheese. I want a little bit of cheese. I want a little bit of meat, some nuts, some fruit. You get the analogy here, but you're not shoving the charcuterie board in your face. You're taking bites at a time about what's meaningful to you. The second part of your question in terms of what is a modern day nuance of having it all, there's just more to have, more to do. I'm a parent. I have two young kids, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. And I think that being a parent really helps me be a better leader. It helps me also be a better parent. Being a good leader helps me be a better parent. And I try to take all of those experiences in my life and make myself a better holistic person. And so I think to me, that's what really having it all is finding what your best self is and trying to find the ways that you can achieve what that is for you. Now, Amanda Davis, Senior Manager of Global Trade Development, has this for you. Who are some of your female role models and who have been some of your biggest supporters throughout your career? Oh, Amanda, thank you for that question. I have been so fortunate in my career to have incredible mentors at all phases. I've had supportive female mentors and supportive male mentors who have always encouraged me to speak my mind, to work hard, to have high expectations of myself, but realistic expectations. I had a supervisor in early on in my career when I was working for local not-for-profits who really encouraged me to go and get an MBA. And I don't think that I would have done that without her raising possibility. And that, to me, was really life-changing. I find role models everywhere. There's not one specific person or a couple of people that I look up to and say, I want to be like that. I think that to me, it's more of there are things that I love about people and I admire about people. And I say, you know what, I'd like to be a little bit more like that. And I try to personalize it and think about what that means and how I might show up similarly in that kind of situation. Next, we have Marsha Jones, Senior Coordinator Accounting and Finance Project Management. What do you think are some challenges in reaching gender equality in the C-suite? The first thing that I would say is a challenge is making sure that there's equal representation. Right now, when you look at the S&P 500 or Fortune 500 companies, female CEOs clock in at less than 10% of that cohort. So the first thing that I think that needs to happen is there needs to be more representation in female leadership and leaders of color in the C-level positions. 
And once we have that, there will naturally be more leadership because those leaders will hopefully empower other leaders in their organizations and inspire other people to step into leadership roles because they see that it is now possible. At the risk of having men be mad at me, I'm going to jump in here and say that I think the travel industry is ripe for improvement because from what I've seen, it's a female-dominated industry and there just aren't enough female CEOs. There are more females on average working within the tourism industry. I think the stat is from the UNWTO that 54% of the workforce within the travel industry is female compared to, I believe it's 39% in other industries. And so we are over-indexing within the sector. However, the majority of those roles are in hospitality positions, in clerical positions. And I think you're right, not necessarily in the C-suite. Ali May, Senior Coordinator, Partner Marketing, has this for you. What professional development advice would you give to women wanting to grow their careers in the tourism industry? I would say, Ali, that this advice transcends the travel industry, but the first one would be to always be curious. Be curious about what is possible. Be curious about how the industry works. Be curious about trends that are happening. Ask questions. Be curious about how you can show up better, different, The second piece of advice would be to find a pot of people within your organization or sector within the industry that you can talk to, that you can share ideas with, that you can ask questions and call up. It doesn't necessarily have to be only people in your company. Our industry is broad but tight. And I have found a lot of success in the relationships that I've built across the board in calling people up and saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking about this thing. Have you heard about it? And people are very open and willing to share ideas and their points of view. And I feel like hearing other people's points of view has made my ideas stronger and made me smarter. And then I think the last piece of advice would be generally be open to asking for feedback and giving feedback. It comes from a good place. Feedback is a gift. If you want to succeed in whatever you're doing, feedback is always going to make you better. And finally, here's one from Dominique McCaskill, Coordinator Marketing Projects. How can women navigate power structures in the workplace? That's a great question, Dominique. You want to make sure that you're always respectful of the workplace structure. Be a good listener. Don't be afraid to have a position on something as long as you can back it up. And similarly to what I just shared with Ali, find the people that you can collaborate with for you to achieve the goals of your organization. That will help you get noticed if you are being successful at achieving organizational goals. Thank you to Amanda, Marsha, Dominique, Alley, and Skylar for your questions. Yeah, no pressure. It's on a podcast. (laughs) Stacey, we should take advantage of the fact that we're doing this podcast while you're on your first international mission in Australia. What have you learned so far? Yeah, it's exciting to be here, Mark. I'm in Sydney right now, and we had a wonderful B2B event yesterday. There was about 1,500 meetings happening with USA partners and travel buyers in Australia and New Zealand. And last night, we had an event where we premiered Internature's Wild to an audience here, and that was very exciting. What I've learned since I've been here is that Australians love to travel. They travel for a longer period of time. On average, they travel about 19 days. That was pre-pandemic. I think there's a lot of excitement. They get four weeks of holiday every year. And so there's a huge opportunity to attract Australians to come to the United States. And in fact, the value proposition that the U.S. has for Aussie travelers is that you can have multiple experiences on one vacation, or they say holiday. And what sense do you get about the post-pandemic mood of Australians looking to travel internationally? That they are ready to go. There are some serious lockdowns in Australia, and the travelers here are very excited about going. The challenge is an airlift. The demand is high, so the prices are high. I talked to somebody a couple of days ago, and you know she referenced them still pulling planes out of the desert. So there are some challenges there, but I'm optimistic about airlift rebounding to pre-pandemic levels by the end of 2023, and so I hope to see more smooth sailing from then on. We'll be doing a podcast specifically about Brand USA missions around the world in the not too distant future. But since we're on the subject, what would you like destinations to know about getting involved with Brand USA missions? 
That's a really great question, Mark. I would say that if you're curious about an international market, joining us on a mission is a perfect way to dip into the market, understand it, meet the people, assess the potential, build those relationships. It's a very quick and efficient way to jump into a market or see what the potential is if you're just looking for the opportunities yourself. As our listeners know, because I've plugged this one many times before, I know the answer to the question I'm about to ask you. So consider this a new employee quiz, Stacy. When destinations are unable to get involved with missions, what's an easy way for them to learn about that market without speaking directly to those from that country? I would encourage them to check out the International Pavilion on the Global Marketplace, where we have a ton of market data and information to assess the market potential for your destination or your business specifically. And listeners, of course, can find the International Pavilion on Brand USA's Global Marketplace website. I know you lived in Australia for a while and actually got your MBA there, so I hope you have time to reconnect with friends. Yeah, I plan to do that this evening, seeing some of my business school friends and seeing some friends over the weekend. So looking forward to that. It's been a great trip and happy to be representing Brand USA. Since it's winter here, it's got to be summer there, right? That's true. So maybe I'll hit the beach. Thanks for being on Brand USA Talks Travel, Stacy. Safe travels and we'll see you back in the USA soon. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Bye. Happy International Women's Day, everybody. That's Brand USA Talks Travel. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. Your feedback is welcome. Email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Brand USA Talks Travel is produced by Asher Mirovich, who also composes music and sound. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Please share this podcast with your friends in the travel industry. You may also enjoy many of our archived episodes, which you can find on your favorite podcast platform. Safe travels.